Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to talk about the three best baits for May bass fishing. April is almost come and gone. We're getting ready to go into May and up here in the Northeast, that means bed fishing most of the times for us. But we've had a little bit of a late spring this year. Water's temps are still a little cold. And just because there's a couple weeks of bed fishing out of May, that doesn't mean you can't catch fish doing other stuff. So I'm gonna save the bed fishing baits for another video. If you'd like to see my favorite bed fishing baits, leave a comment down below. But today we're gonna talk about three baits that can be used for bed fishing, but are also very versatile and will catch pre-spawn, post-spawn, and spawning fish. All three phases, that is what we're gonna be faced with a lot in May, and those are the type of baits that I like to target. They're tied on every time I go fishing. Starting with my number one bait right here, this is gonna be the chatterbait. You absolutely have to have a chatterbait tied on in the month of May in the Northeast for a few reasons. A lot of the times up here in the Northeast, we will start to get our first grass growth of the year in late April and early May, and the chatterbait is an excellent grass fishing bait. These fish will flood right to the first grass that shows up. They'll get in it and they wait to spawn. All the bluegills will go there, all that type of stuff. A lot of lakes we fish up here doesn't have shad. So bluegills, perch, those type of bait fish will go to that grass. They eat the insects that grow in the grass and stuff like that. And then the bass know the food is there as well. They go right to that grass and free feed up for spawn. They'll also spawn in that grass so you can catch spawning fish and then at the end they'll come back out and stop on that grass and feed at the post spawn. So that is how I can get all three phases out of a chatterbait. It is an excellent tool to search in that grass but it also does great just fishing around wood and other types of cover like docks and stuff like that that we have a lot of in our northeast lakes up here. So the first thing we're going to talk about is the size of your chatterbait. I fish two sizes for the most part. I fish a three eighths and I fish a one half. I will use the one half about 90% of the time. I just feel it gets a little bit deeper down in the cover. I can fish it slower and keep it down where I want it to be, rip it out of the grass hard and really get that reaction bite. But if you are good at fishing slow and really feathering this bait through the cover, you will get hung up in the grass less if you go with a three eighths ounce bait. What will happen is it'll tick the tops of the grass where a half ounce will kind of bury down in and you have to snatch it out of there hard. The three eighths will kind of just tick the tops, fall gently in and you'll be able to shake it back out free. And it's a little bit less intrusive than the half ounce. As for the chatterbait selection, I like jackhammers. You do not need a jackhammer. I fished with plenty of others. My other favorite is the Z-Man Chatterbait Elite. They're $6.99. They're very similar to the jackhammer, but they are not the same. Um, the Z-Man Chatterbait Customs are also very similar to the jackhammers, but not the same. And they sell for about $7.99. So those are three good options. Then when it comes to colors, I keep it super simple. My number one color, especially if the water's a little bit dirty, and the, like I said, these fish are feeding solely on bluegills and perch for the most part. I'm going to go with a black and blue. That's one of my favorite ones to go with. I love a black and blue chatterbait with my second choice being a green pumpkin. And it doesn't have to be just a straight green pumpkin. I do have a straight green pumpkin and will fish just a plain green pumpkin. That's probably one of my favorites. But you can also do stuff like green pumpkin red if the water's a little bit dirty. You can do this green pumpkin chartreuse. If you know there's perch in the area, this is an awesome one. Just that little bit of yellow in there can get you some bites with a lot of perch eating fish. Those are my go-to colors. And then if you have some dirtier water or you know your fish feed on shad, my other two favorites are going to be a solid white and a white and chartreuse. The white and chartreuse I will only go to if that water is really stained and the fish are feeding 100% on shad. Other than that, if I just have some stained water and wanna throw something a little bit brighter, or I know they're feeding on shad, I'll go with the plain white. That one works a lot better for me. It has the silver blade, it really mimics those shad. But 95% of the time, I will be throwing black and blue or green pumpkin, or I will have both on. Those imitate bluegills better than anything else, and that's what I'm gonna be using. And then when it comes down to trailer selection, there's only one for me. There are others you can use out there. People like to use Kytex and other swim baits. You can use Rage Menaces and different types of crawfish baits on the back of your chatterbait. But for me, you cannot beat the Yamamoto Zacco. I, I get it in all the different colors. I have black and blue, I have white, I have green pumpkin. The thing with this 
is it gives it that action of a bluegill, it gives it the body profile of a bluegill or a perch, and most importantly, it just has the best action on a chatterbait. It allows me to get it down in the cover, it will allow it to run fairly deep because it's a streamlined bait, but it has a very tight wiggle, almost like a flat-sided crankbait. Oftentimes the water is still cold this time of year, if not barely warming up. I've just caught so many fish on a chatterbait with a Zacco trailer on it. It has just become a confidence bait for me and I throw it the entire month of May. The next bait that I'm going to throw in the month of May, this thing is a killer this time of year and that is going to be the Wacky Rig or a Nico Rig. I, there is a time and a place for both and I'm gonna explain here in just a second why I loop both of these together here for the month of May and how looping them together will allow you to catch all three phases of fish. In the pre-spawn, right before these fish spawn, like the last week or two before they spawn, they will get in a weird phase where they won't eat crankbaits, they won't eat spinnerbaits, they, they, all they wanna do is go spawn but they're not quite ready yet the big females will be staged up on the first thing near where they're gonna spawn. So especially my favorite place is docks, but if you have logs in your lake, they'll suspend in logs and just wait to go. All they're doing is warming up their eggs at the last little bit there. They're just making it easier for them to spawn. A weightless wacky rig skipped around docks, cast it around trees, whatever you need to do, absolutely kills it in May. You will catch so many fish, it is unbelievable. And oftentimes that's how you're gonna get the bigger ones this time of year. The other thing that I can do is right after they spawn, they're gonna look for an easy meal as well. Weightless Wacky Rig Senko, they're gonna go right back to the same spots. They're gonna spawn, go right back to the docks that they were on previously, and they're gonna hang out and wait for an easy meal. They're gonna pick off some bluegills that are starting to work their way up to spawn and do stuff like that. Easy, easy meal. The weightless Senko, I'll skip it right up under those docks and still catch some big post-spawn fish as well if the majority of the fish are starting to go post-spawn. Now how you can tweak this to catch fish on bed is I will take just a small nail weight. I use the lead ones so I can break it off and get different weights based on what I wanna do. But I will shove this in the head just like I do a Nico rig. It is a Nico rig. So I'll shove it up in the head and then I'll still fish it on a wacky presentation. You can still skip it around the docks and it sinks under the docks and you'll be able to catch pre-spawn fish if there's any there or post-spawn fish. But most importantly, if you roll up on a bed that the fish are sitting on right there, a weightless wacky rig takes forever to get down to the bottom. So every time you make your cast in there and you're firing this fish up, getting it ready to bite, you're pulling it out of there and you have to wait for it to sink all the way back down to the bottom. If you have the Nico rig, you can flip it right on the bed. It'll sink down and you can shake it across the bottom of the bed and it will stay on bottom and work right in that fish's face. It'll look like it's a uh, bait fish or something pecking on the bottom of their nest, trying to eat the eggs and stuff like that. It is a killer for bed fishing. You can also set your hook back further on different places on the bait with this O-ring and it will allow you to get fish that are just picking it up by the tail. Your hook will be back here. Instead of like a Texas rig, your hook's up here. You can put your hook back here and the fish pick up the hook every single time. So that allows me to catch all three phases of fish, wacky rig, Nico rig, just get some lead nail weights, some O-rings, and your favorite weightless plastic. My other thing, my favorite hook that I love to use this time of year, and pretty much all wacky rigs, is the VMC weedless Nico hook. It's my favorite one. It has these fluorocarbon weed guards here, so they fall out of the way pretty easy and you get a good hook set. But most importantly, this has a very long shank compared to a regular circle wacky hook where a circle wacky hook, when you set the hook, you will skin hook fish. It will not go all the way through their jaw. You'll lose a lot of fish if you put too much pressure on them. If you use this one with the longer shank, it'll get back behind their cartilage in their mouth when you set the hook, and you'll get a better hook set and land more fish because of it. Then when it comes down to your worm selection, I keep it really simple. Green pumpkin and black and blue go-to colors, depending on the water clarity, that's pretty much what I'm gonna use entirely. One of my favorites is also called Green Pumpkin Burst. These are all the clout worms, 5.4 inch clout from Sixth Sense. If you wanna check any of these out, I will link them down below. I'll have a code, you can save 10% on your order as well. But this worm right here comes in a color called Green Pumpkin Burst. On a sunny day, or especially around the spawn, when these fish are territorial against bluegills, 
this green pumpkin burst has a bunch of flake of different color in it and it really looks like a bluegill when those fish are feeding on bluegills or when you have a sunny day and you want to draw a little bit more attention than the plain green pumpkin that color is awesome as well so i keep those three colors with me i'll alternate through them all you got to do is put it on the o-ring i can change however i want wacky rig nico rig gotta have it for may bass fishing now let's talk about the third bait this is my favorite one to throw, and it might just catch you your new PB in the month of May. So my third bait for May bass fishing, like I said, it might catch you the biggest bass of your life during the spawn, pre-spawn phase right now, is going to be a big swim bait. These are not the biggest swim baits you can buy or throw, but the Mega Bass Mag Draft throughout the month of May has caught me more big bass than probably any other bait combined throughout the regular course of a year. This thing has such a drawing power this time of year. These fish are looking for one last meal or they're looking for stuff that's territorial around their bed, especially smallmouth. I catch a ton of smallmouth on this bait as well. All you have to do is just slow roll this around the most high percentage areas you can find where you know there's a big female waiting to spawn or something like that. You will catch a ton of fish on this bait throughout the month of May. And if you think that bait is too big or you fish ponds or something like that and you still want the same drawing power and want to be able to fish those big swim baits and give it a shot or just want to try and get into it for the first time don't really want to go real big with a swim bait just to gain some confidence in it get an owner beast flashy swimmer right here or just the regular flashy swimmer uh, this one's a five aught with a quarter ounce weight that would be the best place to start and then what i'm going to pair it up with is the sixth sense whale this is a 4.5 inch swim bait it's an inch and a half shorter than that mag draft but it has a very similar profile and it'll allow you to catch fish if you have smaller fish in ponds or you're not as confident in a six inch swim bait yet or even the eight inch if you want to throw that on the mag draft if you're not very confident in that size bait yet you can try these guys right here they're a third of the price and you get multiple to a pack, you can give them a shot. They will still draw those fish. It still has the same head wiggle and tail wiggle that those fish are looking for. You have a little blade on the end that will draw the fish in as well. This setup, if you're just learning to get into big swim baits, would be the number one place I would recommend starting. I'd get a pack of each of these and I'd grab one mag draft, six inch. You will try it. I promise you, you will catch a ton of fish this time of year throwing that bait around, drawing these big fish in that are looking for one last meal. And then when it comes down to color selection, I keep it super simple. As you notice with all these right here, pretty much white. That is like the only color I throw. It's just a big bait fish looking presentation that draws fish in from a distance. I fish the white back shad and the albino shad and brownie are my three colors on mag draft. And then I have the ghost ice minnow right here. Uh, Pro blue is a good one for the sixth sense whale. And then one sneak one, if you do fish places that are ponds, they don't have shad, anything like that. This guy right here, sungill, is an awesome color to throw. It looks like a bluegill, could look like a perch. If you put it on this flashy swimmer, swim it around, you will catch fish as well on this whale in that sungill color. Those are my go-tos. I keep it really simple with the big swim bait. It's more about just keeping it in the water and throwing it and spending time with it and learning how it works and how to draw fish in than it is about your color selection. So white, sungill, mag draft and whale and get you some flashy swimmers you will be catching some big bass throughout the month of may on these three baits right here so i hope you guys enjoyed today's video talking about my three favorite baits for may bass fishing april bass fishing baits will still work as well and if you want to see what my picks are for april bass fishing go ahead and check this video out right here go ahead and leave a like down below and make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any more of my fishing videos coming up thanks for watching